Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a 20 ounce um, skinny tumbler and I'm going to um, let you walk through the process with me. So I'm going to be creating a tumbler with Legos. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go over and I'm actually, uh, I use Google and ask Google to show me some Lego free designs. So um, here you can see I typed in Lego blocks clip art and this is one that I landed on. So I'm going to be using this in my design. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click and save as. And I'm going to put this on my desktop and it's got Lego in there. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And then I'm going to go back over to Cricut and upload it. And you know what, instead of using Cricut, I'm going to go ahead and use Microsoft PowerPoint. That way I won't be limited when it comes to my um, sizing. So I'm going to insert a picture. So from this device, and I'm going to go back to my desktop and just grab that Lego design. I don't know why sometimes it takes a minute for my images to show up. I'm going to go back out and go back to picture this device and desktop. All right, let's go back here. File, save image as, desktop. Okay, so it's telling me I can't download it. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to screenshot it just like that and I'm going to go back over to PowerPoint right click and paste I'm going to go to picture format and I'm going to crop out just a little bit of this little black here on the edge I don't want that and there we go all right, so now that I have my image, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and save as picture, desktop, and Lego. Lego, and save. That way if I wanna use it again. All right, so here we go. I have my background here um, for my designs actually in PowerPoint, when I go to design and come over to slide size, I have the custom size set at 9.899 by 9.08. So I am going to have a little bit of overlap, but I'm going to cut it off. So um, yeah, we'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click copy, and then I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say format background. And I'm going to come over to picture or texture field and I'm going to select clipboard and that way it will place the entire image inside of my my space here and so that way I don't have to worry about um, sizing now the <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be inserting some text here so I'm going to go to insert text and I'm going to put a text box and I'm going to type a name in because I'm going to make this for someone. If I can learn how to spell first, that might be good. 
All right, so I typed in the name Dale and I'm going to be using, I'm gonna find kind of like more of a boyish type font. And I'm gonna blow this up. I think I'm gonna change it to like 150. There we go. And then I'm going to turn it to the side because that's how I'm going to have it placed on on the actual um, tumbler. All right, <clears throat> so what I'll be able to do is when I cut off any excess, um, I won't have any white space or anything like that. And I'll have just a little bit of overlap um, so that I don't have that white line going down the middle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and reverse this um, name here get this shape format, rotate, and I'm going to flip it this way so that when I lay it down on my tumbler, it's going to be going in the right direction. And you know what? I'm going to do this differently. Hold on one second. I'm going to screenshot this again. I'm just going to make it one large image. And when I screenshot, guys, I'm actually hitting the PRT space SC key on my um, laptop. P is in Paul, R is in Robert, T is in Tom, space S is in Sam, C is in Candy. That's your print screen. When you click on that, you can click what area of your screen you want to take a snapshot of. Once you get that done, you just right click and paste it. So that way I can just do picture format, rotate, and I'm gonna say flip horizontal. And that way we got it going the direction that we need it to go. So that when we flip it, it'll be going in the right direction. All right, and now I'm just going to size this down here. All right. So we are now at the point that we can go ahead and get ready to print this out on our sublimation paper. Now I'm using sublimation paper by um, ASUB. It's called ASUB sublimation paper. I'm using ink. Uh, my sublimation ink is by HIPPO, H-I-P-P-O-O, -O, I think it is. I never get it right, but I'll put it in the description because I don't sublimate every day. So sometimes I do forget, guys. I'm not perfect, I admit it. <laughs> My secret's out. Um, but yeah, so, um, and then I'm using, a, my printer is the Epson Workforce 7720, which is the um, inkjet printer that I changed over to sublimation. And it has the two um, trays instead of the one. That's the only difference between the 7710 and the 7720. All right, so let me get my paper here. Give me one second. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my paper in and get this printed out. And then once I get it printed out, I'm going to bring you up on the screen with me. I want to show you something. I just want to show you up to the point that I'm getting ready to print. So, got some new paper. So I'm just going to open it up here. All right. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here and print this out. And then once I get it printed out, I'm going to bring you up on the screen with me so I can show you the rest of the process. Hey, guys, so I now have my image printed out. And what I'm going to do is I don't immediately put this up against my tumbler because the ink is still wet. Um, so I 
kind of give it a minute to kind of dry here before I put it up against my tumbler. I get my tumblers from bulk tumblers and I've, um, I like using the 20 ounce skinny tumblers um, where the sizing is the same from, you know, where you don't have any dips or anything in, in them. Um, so I always get the straight skinny tumblers. Got some plastic or something finger to keep sticking to the tumbler. But you want to make sure that you are using a sublimation tumbler. Sometimes people will sell tumblers on Amazon and they will tell you that it's, you know, good for sublimation. But please read the fine print because I don't want you to get duped because sometimes people aren't honest with that. And so always make sure that you are using a sublimation tumbler. Your sublimation tumblers are coated. So these aren't tumblers that you can actually walk inside Walmart and purchase. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting off a little bit of this excess. And I probably will cut it one more time. Because I do want to make sure that I have it where it is um, not gonna have any bit of a white line. A couple of things that you're gonna need for sublimation guys is you're gonna need, um, I use my Hamilton Beach extra large um, convection oven. I'm not going to be purchasing the uh, mug press because I bought this before the mug press came out and it serves me well. Um, but you're going to need a heat thermometer. And so this helps you to make sure that the temperature inside your uh, convection oven is exactly what it should be. Um, that's very important to make sure that you don't burn this and you have the temperature higher in your convection oven that it needs to be. So this heat thermometer will help you to gauge the actual temperature inside your convection oven, even though you can put it on 375 or whatever, you know, um, number you need to, but you want to make sure that it is accurate. You're also going to need some heat tape and don't laugh at my bootleg um, tape dispenser here, um, but you're going to need some heat tape. And I highly recommend that you get some heat gloves so that you don't burn yourself. Don't forget to take your lid off of your tumbler because you don't want that to melt inside. So make sure you take that off. Now with um, bulk, bulk tumblers, um, it's gonna come with, of course, the lid and you get to choose what type of lid that you want. And it will also come with the straw and you can also say what type of straw it is that you want now. The of course the prices change depending on what you're requesting. Okay, so those are some things. Um, the sublimation paper, like I said, I'm using X, uh, A sub sublimation paper. This is what that looks like. This is the eight and a half by eleven. I also have the um, eleven. I think it's eleven by seventeen, the larger size, so that I can do larger prints on sublimation. And for those of you that are new to sublimation, the reason I like to use the white tumblers is because you cannot, based on what I have, I can't print white um, in sublimation. So um, there is no white ink, let me say that. So that's why I put the name Dale. It's gonna be in black and uh, everything else will be in these beautiful vibrant colors once we get it cut out here. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is going to fit properly before I cut this last little edge. And you want to make sure guys, when you are putting your paper on your tumblers, the object of the game is to make sure that that paper is laying very tight to your sublimation tumbler. Okay. You want it to fit like a glove, okay? Um, the other thing that I forgot to point out is that I'm going to also be using shrink wrap. So I'm gonna be putting very minimal tape on here and then I'm going to finish it off with the shrink wrap, which will help to adhere my paper to my tumbler. So I have more than enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this extra white on the very top. It's 
better to have too much guys and to trim down than to print this out at the size you think you need it smaller than your paper and it ends up being not enough so that's the reason I do mine this way some people have mastered you know the sizing that they need but I find that I always have to make adjustments so and like I said I don't sub every day so you know it's not something that I'm just like oh I gotta get this perfectly and I don't I didn't start crafting to start selling. I start crafting to teach because that's what I like to do. And I didn't want to complicate it with people giving me all their specific needs when you're selling because then it'll become a job and I'm not going to want to do it. I want to keep it fun, 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 fun. So all I'm doing is just making sure that I have enough and that when I overlap this, it's going to make sense where I overlap it. So I'm looking to see what's going to make the most sense here. And I think I'm going to sh shut it down. About right here. There will be no white showing on this tumbler. None. I'm going to shift this up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to get ready to start taping, taping it. So let me bring this down so you guys can see. Here, you want to make sure that tumbler, the ASA paper is tight. So I am pulling this tightly around my tumbler. Tight is the name of the game. All right. So pull, 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 and pull, and pull. All right. That's going to be perfect. And you want to make sure that it's tight. So once I start taping this down, guys, I'm just going to put some tape here on this um, seam and then I'm going to put a continuous piece of tape around the top and then on the bottom. And then I'm going to be using shrink wrap with my heat gun. Um, and you always want to make sure that you leave a little bit of excess, put it this way, a little bit of excess at the top and the bottom of the shrink wrap. That way it can fold under to secure that part of your tumbler. So I will link where I got my shrink wrap from because I don't remember right now. So I'll have to look it up in one of my previous videos and I'll put that in there or you can look at my previous video, but I will put it here um, as well for you. So you don't have to go look for it. All right, that's good and tight. And like I said, I'm going to be using this heat tape, very minimal heat tape. When I first started doing sublimation, guys, um, I was putting tape, butcher paper, you name it, you know, trying to get this stuff done. And uh, you learn along the way. So you want to make sure that you close that seam. And you don't want any type of bubble or anything like that. So once I get it on there tight, tightly, I try to hold it down so that I can, um, I don't lose that tightness. So I'm just going to grab some more tape here. And again, do not laugh at my little bootleg, little bootleg tape dispenser. Okay. One more little piece of tape we're going to put right here. Okay. And we're making sure that we don't have any spacing in here. 
caught on my finger. Because if you have any pockets, guys, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with what we call ghosting. And that's where you have the white marks. And we do not want that. All right. So we got that nice and tight, nice and tight. And now I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape at the top and at the bottom. And this time I'm going to take a little tape out because I like to have a continuous roll going around the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do the bottom first. So I'm just going to have a little bit of overlap so that I can bring that little bit part, uh, that little bit of overlap, roll that under. So just a continuous piece of tape going around that. Oh, mama ain't got all day to play with you. All right. Flip that off. And then I'm going to fold this under just like that. And you want to make sure it's nice, no pockets, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with the top one continuous strand of tape to go around that top so that we can cut off any air pockets. Okay. And we'll be folding this under to prevent air pockets. And then the, of course, the shrink wrap is going to help us to even pull this even tighter to our tumbler. So we're going to be folding that over just like that. Alrighty. So that's it. Man, if you could have seen the tape, the amount of tape that I used to use back in the day, it was ridiculous, like seriously ridiculous. And I'm not going to be using any butcher paper or anything like that. I'm just going straight in with my shrink wrap. So let's get this back. I'm a little bootleg tape dispenser here. And one day, no time soon, I will invest in a real heat tape tape dispenser, but not today, not that important. All right, now we got that back on there. I twisted my tape, take that off in just one second. There we go. All right, so we're gonna move that out of the way. And I'm going to grab my heat gun here and show you how I put the shrink wrap on. All right. You want to make sure that you don't get too close to the heat gun because you don't want to burn the shrink wrap because it will um, have an impact on your outcome. So you want to make sure that you don't burn it. You're not too close. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my heat gloves on because this heat gun is gonna be hot and I don't wanna burn myself. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and start my convection oven. So give me one second here.
All right, I have it on 375 and I have it set on convection. And we're gonna go ahead and put our shrink wrap on. that shrink wrap on. Make sure it's nice and everything is nice and tight and you don't have any pockets looking at you. Because that will not be a good look. with these gloves on. Come on now. Here we go. All right, we're going to have some overlap on our bottom and on our top so that it can fold over nicely to help us secure that. And I always try to start out in the middle. I say try. <laughs> and kind of shoot up work. Back down. Same thing here. Don't want to get too close and burn that shrink wrap. Try to get out as much air as possible. Get that over there nice and tight. And try not to get too close and burn it. And there we have it. So now we have our shrink wrap on nice and tight. You are making sure that you don't have any bubbles or anything. Let me hit that little side right there. All right, and it's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna put it in my convection oven at 375 for six minutes. I always put it, my timer on my cell phone and put my cell phone on six minutes because you can't really gauge a true six minutes on there because you're just flipping the timer over or the time over. So I wanna make sure that I don't leave it in for six minutes. And at the three minute interval, I'm going to shift this or turn it, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna come back and I will do the reveal with you, okay? So I'm going to pause my video and I will be right back. All right, so now my timer has went off on my phone. I started pulling off the heat tape <laughs> before I realized I hadn't started the tape back here or the video back here. So I'm going to throw these back on. We're going to see what we got. So you should be able to see the image coming through or the ink coming through when you sublimate. Um, that's one indication that it's sublimated fine. So like I said, I started filling this and then realize I did not start my tape back. So we're going to go ahead and pull off here. So for 
are so good. And again, I did 375 for six minutes. I rotated it in at three. So you guys can see here the finished project. And there's the name, which is perfect. So we got all perfectly sublimation. And that's where I did my little overlap, but it's perfectly fine because it kind of blends in, but that's it. And then you can see I put a little bit of overlap on the bottom, not much. And yeah, it turned out perfectly. So once that cools down, then I will put the, still really hot, I'll put the lid back on. And the perfect thing about these guys is that it comes with the box. So they're individually boxed. It comes with box. And if you're gifting them, then you can just put them back in the little um, plastic here, put the lid on top, pop that um, straw over here with it, and you're good to go. But um, I can pick it up now without worrying about the temperature. But as you can see, let me turn it around there. Perfect. Perfecto. Okay. Um, if you have any questions in regards to the process, guys, then let me know. But I think this turned out perfectly. And I think that Dale is going to absolutely love this because he is a Lego kid. He loves, loves, loves Legos. And so I know that he's going to cherish this for a very long time. And it's gotten cool enough where I can put the top on. Now, if you don't have the saran wrap, guys, and you have to take this thing to the bejesus, just know that after you finish the sublimation, give it about 24 hours and then wash it because you're going to have like a sticky feel, especially if you're using, um, I think it's like painter's tape. If you're putting painter's tape on here, it's going to be sticky. So that's how come I don't, uh, I ended up going with this um, shrink wrap instead of having to use all that tape because there's no stickiness. I don't have to worry about washing this if I don't want to. I'll wash it for sanitary purposes before I gift it to him. But other than that, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And some people inquire about this seal on the bottom. Some people take it off. Some people leave it on. I've never had any issues with it. So I just leave it on there. Um, you know, um, but again, things that you'll need for sublimation. Invest in some heat gloves. Invest in some heat gloves. I got these off Amazon. I'll link them in the description. Um, get you a heat thermometer. My convection oven I bought at Walmart is the extra large Hamilton Beach convection oven. And I think it was like 70 bucks um, at that time. I don't know what they're priced at now because I've had mine maybe a year, maybe a year, or maybe less than, maybe about six. No, it's been almost a year um, that I've had it. And bulk, B-U-L-K, tumblers is awesome. You can guarantee that you're going to get a good sub out of their sublimation tumblers. I've never had any issues. Like I said, they come individually packaged. You can choose the lid and you can choose the straw that will come with them. Um, what else? You're definitely going to need your heat tape. So you can get you some heat tape. Um, and what else? Um, a sub sublimation paper. I'm using the Epsom Workforce 7720 and I'm using the Hippo. Let me make sure I'm saying the name right.
this is the ink that I'm using. Um, it's very reasonable. I think it was like $35. I will tell you that it does not come, and I've had this, guys, for a long time. And I'm not, I'm right here, right there where my thumb is. I've been using this ink since last year. Like I said, I don't sub every day. I've never had any issues with, you know, my ink, you know, not coming out right. You guys can see how clear that is, no lines or anything like that. Um, so no lines going all through the image. I always end up with a little bit of lines in the black, but no other colors. And I don't really stress about it because it still looks really nice. Um, what else? Um, but Hifu, this is the ink that I'm using. And like I said, it's about $35 or it was about $35 when I got it. Um, the company sponsored me for this, so I didn't buy it. I will tell you that it does not, for that price of $35, it does not come with the syringes um, and it doesn't come with the um, little plastic uh, syringe. Okay, so it doesn't come with the needle or the syringes. Okay, however, if you want to pay where you get the full kit, for Ink X Pro, which is another really great ink that I love, which is what I started out with. I have my Ink X Pro. And you can see it's not dried out or anything. And it's also up here at the top. Um, <clears throat> so they do last for quite some time. I guess if you're not sublimating every day like I'm not. Um, but this one is about 80 bucks, uh, or it was about 80 bucks when I purchased it, and it's actually going to come with everything. So you're going to get your needles and you're going to get your syringe, okay? Because you do need these in order to um, change your ink out from inkjet to sublimation. And I don't like to say convert it because then it scares people. It's so easy to do, guys. Um, so, yeah. So HIFU does not come with your syringes and needles, but Ink X Pro does. HIFU is a little bit more cost efficient, um, but I guess once you add the needles and the syringes, it's about the same, but both are great, great products, okay? So like I said, I absolutely love how my tumbler turned out for Dale. And next I'm going to do a sublimation t-shirt for him. Um, and Legos, so that's my gift to him for his, I think his 13th birthday, and I hope I got that right, all right, all right, guys, that's my story, I'm sticking to it, again, this is sublimation on a 20-ounce skinny tumbler, it is not hard to do, um, you guys saw me go in and walk through the whole process, and if you want to avoid that just little bit of overlap there, you just cut off that extra piece of paper, I didn't want to chance it and end up with any white, so I'm totally okay with a little bit of green and orange mixed there. It blends in, so it's perfect. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, wash this up, put it over into your plastic just like that. It'll look like you just bought it from the store, which you didn't. Um, his birthday is today, so I'm going to tell him to wash it before he, he uses it since I'm not going to have time to wash it. Um, but it's ready to go, and all I have to do is just add the little straw because the straw won't fit on the inside, so I'll take the straw to it, and then I'll do his little sublimated t-shirt. Mask it for Legos. Yay, Lego! Um, so if you have any questions, guys, about the process, if there was anything that wasn't clear, let me know, and uh, I do reply in the comments. And um, other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today is the sublimation of the Lego blocks, building blocks on a 20 ounce tumbler. And I used Microsoft PowerPoint. I did not use Cricut Design Space because this is a print project and I don't want to have any size restrictions on me. Um, even though 6.75 by 9.25, you may make it. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Um, but yeah. That's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, guys, if you're currently in my Facebook group, Candoris is Freaking Creative Crafters, I want to thank you guys so much for being members of my Facebook group. Um, and we do a lot of sharing and helping others in my group. 
It is a closed group. So if you would like to join us, then just send me a Facebook group request to Candoris's Cricket and Creative Crafters. Now it's not a Facebook page, it's a Facebook group, okay? Um, and then if you are currently subscribed or a member on my YouTube channel, thank you so much guys for the love and support here on YouTube. And if you're not, you're seeing me for the first time, you like my method of teaching, then please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> and um, check out my playlist because on my playlist on my channel, that's where I have all of my different tutorials broken up into groups. So if you're specifically looking for something sublimation, you'll go to the sublimation playlist. If you're looking for something that is um, just how to use Cricut Design Space, then I have that in there for attaching, welding, all that good stuff. Um, if you're just looking for crafting tutorials, I have that broken out for you as well. Um, but yeah, check it out. All right. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And as always, my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have a great day. Bye.